Thank you so much, uh, dear sister Susan. We praise the Lord indeed for the new month that is before us. November is here. The year is steadily ending. The Lord is in perfect control. Let's continue to pray. Lord, we thank you for indeed this is the month that you have made. Lord, we declare that we will rejoice and be glad in you, through you, with you in this month, that we shall see your goodness in the land of the living. Lord, we dedicate each day of this month to you. Master, I pray that as we even share in your word, that you will get the assurance that from the beginning, you knew that a month like this would come to be, and that, Lord, as we conclude the year, that you call us to continue shining your light. And while we may be surrounded by aspects of impossibilities, Lord, thank you that you make a way where there seems to be no way. Lord, may you indeed demonstrate your power going ahead of us in this month, going ahead of us as we finish the year. Lord, we pray that as we also begin to begin to see the year 2024 set in, Lord, that you lead us as your children, that we shall not lag behind, that, Lord, we will be a people that set the pace for everyone else, demonstrating you and your power and your grace unto us and through us to your people. So, Lord, as we share in your word, as we come in devotion, speak, O Lord, for we, your children, are listening. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, brothers and sisters, you are welcome to the month of November. Our, our theme of sharing this month is a set apart people, a set apart people. And this morning we are particularly sharing on the theme, uh, a people holy to the Lord, a people holy to the Lord. And our reading is coming from Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6 to 8. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6 to 8. Allow me to read this for us. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6 to 8. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be his people his treasured possession. The Lord did not set his affection on you and choose you because you were more numerous than other peoples, for you were the fewest of all peoples. But it was because the Lord loved you and kept the oath he saw to your ancestors that he brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the land of slavery, from the power of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, as uh, we share on this topic for today, a people holy to the Lord, and uh, the bigger theme that we have for the month are set apart people. Allow me make a clarion call that it is not by coincidence that we are launching this today as we also celebrate the All Saints Day, All Saints Day. All Saints, not just All Saints Cathedral Kampala, All Saints, all people of God. And the bigger bit of, bit of our morning, we are going to be sharing on this aspect of the saints of God, because the saints of God, as we'll be sharing, are the holy and faithful brothers in Christ Jesus. But first, what does it mean for us to be a people set apart, a people set apart? God has separated us. God has chosen us. God has consecrated us. God has differentiated us from all that are around us, as we heard in the text, that we've been selected from all the peoples of the world. And not because we've been good, but simply because of his love, his mercies, his compassionate nature, and by his grace alone. He has kept the promise to our ancestors, kept the promise to ancestors, 
and he is the promise keeping God. He has chosen a people to be his treasured possession, a people set apart. I pray that as we journey through the month of November, you and I will see ourselves all over this world as a people that God has distinguished from all around us and that we shall live distinguished people. The Bible talks of Daniel having distinguished himself from the rest of the governors that the, God, that the king chose to set him above all the others. When you distinguish yourself, when you know that God has set you apart, that you are not to be in a mess in the cafe, in the catago of all the people that are around us, God distinguishes you and God sets you above all the others. A people set apart. A people holy to the Lord. A people holy to the Lord. Today, as we celebrate the All Saints Day, it is not coincidental, as I've already mentioned, that we are reflecting on this critical aspect of where people set apart, a people holy to the Lord. Today, we also join celebrating the marriage of 14 couples in a corporate wedding. And this is a fruit of our prayers, the hand of God. Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters, that as we celebrate the All Saints Day, today, 14 marriages are being renewed in the Lord. 14 marriages are being sanctified in the Lord. And it is because of your prayers, it is because of our yearnings, because of our understanding that you've been called to shine in this world as the saints of the Lord. Uh, I received uh, some parents coming to attend the wedding of their daughter because we have known them in, uh, in, in our fellowships in Sangati, in Gayaza. And uh, it was very humbling to see this mother come from Hoima, to come and attend the daughter's wedding and it is her first time to step in Kampala. Can you imagine somebody giving a testimony today and in the future? The first time they came to Kampala was when they were coming to attend their daughter's wedding at All Saints Cathedral, Kampala. We praise the Lord that we are a people holy to the Lord, a people set apart, distinguished, that the praises of God will be known to all people. As evangelicals, friends, we celebrate saints in the biblical way. We don't celebrate saints in the way that some traditional uh, high church people do celebrate the saints. We celebrate saints in the biblical way. And the Bible defines a saint as one who is holy, walking in holiness, set apart for God's special purposes. Every follower of Jesus Christ Friends is a saint. Everyone that has said, I'm going to follow the Lord Jesus is a saint. So today we celebrate you as well. We celebrate each other. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1, the Apostle Paul writes and says to the saints in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, other versions say God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus. He's talking to people that are alive, not people that are dead, but people that are alive in Christ Jesus. And in Philippians chapter 1, verse 1, the Apostle Paul continues and writes to all the saints in Christ Jesus at Philippi, to all the saints in Christ Jesus at Philippi. Friends, to all the saints attending a Zoom meeting at All Saints Cathedral. Saints are people that have given themselves to the Lord completely. And even when they are still living, they are saints. You are a saint as long as you've given yourself completely to the work of the Lord. Colossians chapter 1 verse 2, he writes and says, The holy and faithful brothers in Christ at Colos. And so today, it could be to the holy and faithful Zoom meeting at Kampala, to All Saints Cathedral, in some home cell, in some meeting. Friends, the saints, according to the Bible, are the people walking in holiness, set apart for God's special purposes. 
But also, there are those that are already in heaven. So there is an understanding in which the saints are those on their way to heaven, but also those that are already with the Lord. Who got to know the Lord while in the world? They were saints here on earth, and their sainthood has carried on as they are with Jesus. These are a people so glad, so joyful, because they have been set free in Christ Jesus. And uh, there is an old time song that um, we sing. I am so glad that Jesus set me free. I'm so glad that Jesus set me, set me free. I am singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus set me free. These are the saints singing, proclaiming the freedom in Christ Jesus that you have received. And as we celebrate the All Saints Day today, I just invite us to make a reflection and meditation as we sing this song together as individuals, wherever you are. I'm so glad that Jesus set me free. I'm so glad that Jesus set me free. I'm so glad that Jesus set me free. I'm singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus set me free. Once I was a sinner, but Jesus set me free. Once I was the sinner, but Jesus set me free. Once I was the sinner, but Jesus set me free. I'm singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus set me free. I am on my way to heaven. I'm shouting victory. I'm on my way to heaven. I'm shouting victory. I'm on my way to heaven. I'm shouting victory. I'm singing glory. Hallelujah. That Jesus set me free. Friends, as we celebrate the All Saints Day, the Bible tells us that we that are been set free in Christ Jesus even today in this world, living this earthly life, as long as we're in Christ Jesus, you and I are in the cloud of the witnesses of the saints. The right of Hebrews in pointing to those that have gone ahead of us. Chapter 11, verse 39, 40. Hebrews chapter 9, uh, chapter 11, verse 39 to 40. Uh, the Hebrews writer has this to say. Hebrews uh, chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. Verse. Or the Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 39 to 40. There's a sense in which. The saints are also the people that have already gone ahead of us. The Chivangeles. The Jananilums. The apostles that you read in the biblical times the people that have gone ahead of us, the men and women of faith, as you read in Hebrews chapter 11. And this is how this wall of the faithful is concluded. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 39. These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. Since God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they be made perfect only together with us there's a sense in which he's speaking his text is speaking about the, the, the us living in the present times and the them that have lived before and have triumphant they are now in the lord with the lord jesus christ and together with them our testimony their testimony is made conflict is made complete and so there is a sense in which we are also talking about the people that are already with the Lord and they are in the centerhood of Christ Jesus. They have left a testimony in this world, a mark in this world. And the, the, this Hebrews text is, is, is telling us, only together with us would they be made perfect. Meaning we have a work to do to carry on the good work that they have started, that they left with us in our hands, that we carry this on to the completeness of the testimony of the power of Christ Jesus. And so friends, as we reflect on this topic, a people holy to the Lord, it is not by coincidence that on this All Saints Day, we are called to reflect, to reflect on holiness. Because as we've read from the Pauline letters of Ephesians, of the 
Philippians and Colossians, there is a way in which sainthood is related to holiness. And we that are living in holiness today are called to emulate the example of those that have been in this world before. And together with them, their testimony, their labor for the Lord is made complete. They died and their testimony is complete with us. It also connects this with the Old Testament saints and the New Testament times and our times today. I pray, friends, that as we continue to make reflection on the aspect of being set apart in this month, you will see your role in making the testimony of the saints before, the biblical saints, the heroes of faith that have lived in Uganda, that have labored for this faith, that we take on the challenge to take it to another level in our time today. Saints are a people holy to God. They've been set apart, chosen, differentiated, consecrated by God to serve God's purposes. As we read Deuteronomy, where we have taken our text from Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6 to 8, we get to understand that um, Deuteronomy brings to us a picture that is almost like that of a briefing session. Uh, it is time for your NEB examinations and quite a number of us parents. We have attended some briefings um, as parents, but also our students, our children have attended briefing in preparation for the examinations. Deuteronomy is one of those briefing moments for the children of God as they get prepared to enter the promised land. Moses has been with them for 40 years. And before they get into the promised land, there is this moment in which he briefs them, he prepares them as they get into the land that is flowing with milk and honey. It is a repetition in Deuteronomy, an aspect of emphasis in order to serve the Lord in holiness. As we read Deuteronomy chapter seven, the verses that we just read. You sense the following. You sense the redeeming work, redeeming act of God. What the Lord has done in order to bring his people, the far that he has brought them. And as we reflect on this, I hope that you begin to look into your own history and begin to ask yourself, what are these redeeming acts of the Lord in my life? We read in verse 8, who these people were. And verse 8 of Deuteronomy chapter 7 tells us that the Lord loved them. Rather, at the end of verse 7, that they were the fewest of all people. They were the fewest of all people. And as Israel, or children of Israel, they were also slaves in Egypt. Being fewest as an aspect of them being the minority, and therefore they didn't deserve much. They were in bondage. We are told in verse 8 that because the Lord loved them, he kept his oath that he sought his ancestors. They were the fewest. They therefore didn't qualify. But because of the love of God, they are being set free. They are being redeemed who they were, they were the minority. And what did the Lord do? The Lord loved them affectionately. He chose them as his treasured possession, precious to God, and gave them a special care, a cherished people. And there was a price that you had to pay. In the act of redemption, as we read through the Exodus, when you remember the aspect of uh, the plagues, the death of the first bones, and the blood that was smeared at the doors of the Egyptian homes. All this was God's redeeming act, setting his people free from the bondage in Egypt. What the Lord has done to these people that were a nobody, that were a minority, that were enslaved, God has loved them affectionately, unconditionally, and out of that love, they've become the Lord's treasured possessions. As we see in verse six, for you are a people holy, you are a people holy to God. 
the Lord your God has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be his people, his treasured possession. God has made these people his treasured possession. This is the act of God working out to redeem his people. And we see this in each of our lives every moment, every now and then. We read in Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 2, that they were chosen as a treasured possession. We read in Exodus chapter 19, verse 5, that if you obey fully out of many nations, you'll be my treasured possessions, called out of many nations to be God's treasured possessions. Praise the Lord. And as a result of God's redeeming acts, they have become a holy people, a holy people. The journey to holiness is initiated by the Lord himself, is God's act of his love. And he wants to turn us from being nobodies, from being the minority, from being the rejected, to being a treasured possession. This act of God making his people holy foreshadows the redeeming act of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we see re-echoed in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 to 10. And this is one, one of those other texts that we are going to make central in this month that I would like to read as well right now. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 to 7. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Praise the Lord. God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Let's put a finger here. We have not just been made a treasured possession. There is a purpose, there is a reason, there is a ministry that we must fulfill as the Lord's chosen possession. We have not been distinguished or set apart for nothing. It is that out of who God has made us, we will declare his praises of him that has called us out of darkness into his wonderful light. That is a mission that we have. And one of the reasons I'm really thankful to the Lord for All Saints Cathedral is today, out of our giving, out of our sacrifice, out of our prayers, 14 marriages are being redeemed in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I started by sharing with you a testimony of this woman, this wonderful mother that has traveled all the way from Hoima to see his, her daughter who's been married, uh, who's been in a, in a marriage kind of setting. Um, they have got three children for the last about uh, seven years, and they've been praying, will this son-in-law all the way from Tororo ever bring our daughter to Yolta? This mother is in Kampala for her first time. We praise God that my wife and I have had the opportunity of hosting them. We are God's treasured possession. He called us out of darkness that we may declare his praises. Our prayer is all saints cathedral. We'll continue to declare the praises of the Lord into this world, into the city of Kampala. Friends, you are not just a saint for nothing. You see, there are titles that are wonderful to possess. I love to be called a saint. I love to be called a man of God, a woman of God. Oh, it gives me an aspect of different from the others. But you see, it is not just being different from the others. It is that I will declare God's praises to this world. Him who called me out of darkness, let people see that I am different from everyone else and declaring the praises of the Lord. Praise the Lord. This month also, we have our missions team, missions department and missions ministry together with the home cell and pastoral care ministry, teaming up together to preach the gospel. Praise the Lord. Our famous end of year mission, 
two ministries, home sales and pastoral care coming together, but not just these two ministries. As you can see, today it is the family ministries. And I have a feeling at the end of it all, it's going to be maybe another family ministries event. It is, it is all of us together. It is all saints together saying, how, it, how do we declare the good news of the Lord to the world around us? We are not saints just by name. We are saints according to First Peter chapter 2, verse 9, that will declare God's praises and his wonderful light to all the people that are around us. Let's remember that once we are not a people. Wait a bit, brother and sister. Do you remember that time when you were enslaved, that time when you were a nobody, when you were rejected, when you didn't have the job that you have, when you could not afford rent, forget even about building the house you live in. Do you take time and remember the time when you seem to be a nobody and you see the redeeming acts of the Lord? Friends, when I draw back and consider my own life, Sometimes it feels like I am dreaming. I grew up in the hills of Chigezi. I remember cutting down trees, making charcoal. The trees were called Brikote. This was one of the hardest type of tree that ever existed on the hills of Chigezi. We made charcoal out of that. I remember the first pair of, uh, of, of, of trousers that I made. I had to sell about four bags of charcoal and bought a pair of trousers for my Christmas. Hey, friends, I remember climbing the hills of Chigezi and sweating. You know what was still? I remember brewing local waraji in Chigezi. And so I remember at home, I used to be the, the tester for whether the mwenge bigere, the local alcohol, the, the brewed out of bananas to test whether it had fermented to the level of now being boiled to make Uganda Waraji. Friends, I remember all those. And I see myself at All Saints Cathedral. I see myself preaching to God's people. And I ask, is it really me? Do you remember the times when you were not a people, when you were a nobody? Every time you hear of a marriage struggling, every time you hear of a man lost into addiction, every time you hear of a, a family failing. Every time you hear of a person that is lost into the world, remember it could have been you. But out of God's mercies, out of his love, he has made you a treasured possession. Allow me to state this. The worst form of um, greed, listen, the worst form of greed is we believers that God has redeemed, keeping this redemption to ourselves and hiding it from the world. That for me is the worst form of greed. When I do not share this hope in Christ Jesus with my neighbor, when I keep the resources God has given me that I did not deserve away from my neighbor, when I'm driving this wonderful car of mine, and all the way from Gayasa, I can't give a single person a lift. Yes, I know the risks that are involved in this, but not giving anyone a lift, not surrendering this car to the service of the Lord, the worst form of greed is to hide away from God what he has freely given to us. Friends, I pray that we will know that you've made, we've been made God's possession, treasured possession, that will declare his glory his praises to the entire world. Praise the Lord. Israel was chosen by the Lord that out of their obedience, out of their example, the other nations would get to know the Lord. Israel was given their treasured possession that out of them, the praises of God would be declared to the rest of the nations. Unfortunately, Israel up to today has not understood this blessing that they have to the rest of the world. But you know what? God has not given up on them. Even as we talk right now with the war that surrounds them, God has not withdrawn his hand away from Israel. 
God, you are so patient. God, you are so good. Brother, you could be here. Sister, you could be here. And maybe you've not taken your relationship with the Lord Jesus seriously. He will not hide you. He will not get his hand from you. He will continue to bless you. But time will come, friends, when God will say enough is enough. God has made you a saint that out of you, his praises would be known to the rest of the world. And now I want to finish with another bit that we see in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 7, uh, the first bit of it. So how is Israel supposed to behave among the rest of the people around them? And here I want to bring in and ask, how are we to behave as a people that are set apart? How are we to behave as God's holy people in the world we are in today? The world we are in today has got powers, forces much stronger than us. And we read in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 7 from verse 1. When the Lord your God brings you into the land you are entering to possess and drives and drives out before you many nations, the Hittites, Jigashites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, seven nations larger and stronger than you. Mark that. These people were stronger. They were larger than Israel. Israel, you were nobody. You were a minority. They are nations larger and stronger than you. Remember, the spies sent to the promised land. They find the Anakites, and the people are saying, wait a bit, they, the Anakites are there. We look like grasshoppers before them. Have you looked like a grasshopper in your office? Have you looked like a nobody in your marriage? In your family, have you looked like you are a nothing? Friends, the nations around us are stronger than us. The LGBTQ voice, the voice of the enemy in the world today seems to be stronger than the voice of the Lord. Everyone keeps saying, church, speak. We are speaking. But you see, the voice of the world may be larger and stronger. The Lord warned Israel, those nations are larger and stronger than you. But remember, the Lord has driven them out. Hallelujah. The Lord has already given us victory. Saints of the Lord, the victory has already been won by the Lord Jesus because the verse starts with, when the Lord gets to the land you are going to possess and drives out before you, the Lord, when you trust him, he drives out the enemy. So how are they supposed to behave? Verse 2 says, when your God has delivered them over to you, not only does he drive them out, he delivers them to you. And you have defeated them, then you must destroy them completely. Praise the Lord. Destroy them completely. Have nothing to do with them. When the Lord has delivered you, when God has granted you salvation. You see, there are people today, friends, that we are still negotiating with small petty things as the people that are in Christ Jesus. You are wondering whether what you are wearing is decent or not. Friends, when the Lord has granted you salvation, please stop bargaining with the enemy. De completely destroy them. When the Lord has delivered you unto them, you have defeated them, you must destroy them totally. That's what the verse is saying, destroy them totally. And when you read in Ephesians chapter 5, the apostle Paul seems to, to tell the people then that you see, there is a life you lived before. You were dead in the world, but Christ Jesus has redeemed you. And therefore, all the matters of the flesh and your former life defeat it totally, totally as a saint of God. Number two, he tells them, Make no treaty with them. In verse 2 again of Deuteronomy chapter 7 at the end. Make no treaty with them. Show them no mercy. In other words, do not get into an agreement or covenant with them, with the world. Number 3 in verse 3. Do not intermarry with them. Do not give your daughters to their sons or take their daughters for your sons. For they will turn your children away from following me to serve other gods. And the Lord's anger will burn against you and will quickly destroy. There's an aspect of protection for the younger generation. We praise God that over the weekend we launched at All Saints Cathedral what you call the Save Our Children Initiative. 
save our young people initiative. And we pray that together we raise a voice for the next generation. The people that are saints called to serve the Lord and his purposes. We are to destroy the enemy around us totally. We are not to intermarry with them. We are not to make any treaty, any agreement with them. Praise the Lord. Verse 5 has this to say, number 4, this is what you are to do to them. Break down their altars, smash their sacred stones, cut down their Asherah, Asherah poles, and burn their idols into fire. There's an aspect of here, a holy anger against evil, a holy anger against idolatry. Holy anger against idolatry. A people that are holy to God, not only are we holy in terms of our behavior, not only are we holy in terms of status as saints, people that are on our way, marching to heaven and shouting victory, but we live a life of warfare. We give the enemy no chance. We are fighting against evil and we are passionately pulling down all powers of darkness. We are burning with holy anger and holy zeal. Praise the Lord. I pray that in this month, together with our missions ministry and our home cells, that we are going to open up our homes to be believers that are in prayer together and in ministry together, declaring the praises of the Lord, him that has called us out of darkness and given us the status that we have today. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that by your mercies and your love, you have distinguished us. Help us to be like Daniel, who so distinguished himself and chose to walk in holiness, that he would not compromise his walk with the world that was around him. Him, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, together, Lord, the foe, distinguished themselves and refused to defile themselves with the king's food. We have the kings of the world today that are defiling our walk with you. And yet, Lord, we have defeated them. Lord, I pray that you will enable us by your grace again to defeat all these powers, to pull down the, 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 the strongholds that are around us, to live lives that are completely set apart. Lord, I pray that you give us a resilience like you did for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego thrown into the fire they said, no, they would not worship any idol. They were thrown into the fire. In the fire, you were with them. You made them a testimony. There could be people here, Lord, that are in the midst of fires in terms of their jobs, fires in terms of their families, fires in terms of their ministries. Lord, I pray that you make them a testimony of your power, your grace, as your treasured possessions. There could be people here that are like Daniel. God has exalted you in that office. God is calling you to remain distinguished, to declare his praises, to not be in any understanding, to not to sign any treaty or any agreement with the enemy. And the Lord will be with you. You may be thrown into a den of lions, but the Lord will be with you in that circumstance and will grant you victory. Father, as we journey together through this month, we pray that we will see you indeed fulfill your promises for each of our lives as the saints that live today. And we pray, King of glory, that one day we will meet you face to face and together with the saints that have gone before us, then shall their testimony be made complete. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. God richly amen. bless you. Over to you, Sister Susan. Amen, amen, amen. I have been blessed. I hope amen. everyone has been blessed. Um, one highlight is remember that time when you were a, no a nobody. Remember the Malik Lay from which you were good from. Remember that even when they are stronger than you, even when they are larger than you, you have a backing up of the Lord. Remember, remember, remember. 
what mark do you have what mark do you have as a child of god what mark do you have as one that has been set apart what mark do you have do you know what the lord has done to set you free he gave his life god gave his only begotten son so that we can be set free and so we need to obey him we need to to depend on him yeah i mean do you remember that time when you were rejected when you had no friend when you didn't have anyone closer to you apart from him when you didn't know what to do when you didn't know what to expect remember remember let us pray father in the name of jesus we thank you for your word we thank you for your servant that has spoken to us we glorify your holy name father lord he has brought it out so vividly oh god father when we have cried to you oh god and you have answered us and we have forgotten oh god we pray that you forgive us you forgive us oh god when we didn't know what to do oh god and all we could do is to cry to you is to lean on you oh god my master and lord you answered us oh god my master forgive us for the times we have forgotten oh god and and we have felt like as if nothing has happened oh god my master those times when we felt that life seemed over oh it is over with me Oh, will I ever be someone, O King of Kings? And when we become someone, we forget, O God, my master. Father, Lord, remind us, remind us, O God, my master. Remind us that it is your hand, your right hand, O God, my master, that has got us to where we are now, O King of Kings, my master. King of Kings and Lord of Lords, I pray that, Lord, we shall have a mark. We shall have a mark, oh God, my master, that there is one who is in us, who is greater than he who is in the world, oh God, my master. Father, Lord, my master, that Lord, when they see us, indeed, they will see us as a people that that set uh, uh, that has set apart, oh King of kings and Lord of lords, my master. King of kings and Lord of lords. Thank you. Thank you, oh God, for that crowd of witnesses, oh God, my master. King of kings, my master, even though they do not hear, oh God, my master, what you're speaking about them, oh God, my master. Father, they were set apart, oh God, my master, and obeyed you, oh God, my master, and they are declared saints, oh God, my master. Father, Lord, my master, I am very sure that every one of us that is, is connected, oh God, has seen your righteous right hand has seen you, oh God, my master, remove them from, from, from the pit, oh God, my master, has seen your redemption, oh King of Kings, has seen your redemptive power, oh God, my master, including those that are, 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 are still thinking about receiving you, oh King of Kings, my master, they have seen your hand, oh God, my master, we surely have seen your hand, oh God, help us, to acknowledge that, Lord, it's not that we deserved it. We, we, we didn't deserve, oh God, even to be born in the families that we are born into, oh God, my master. We didn't deserve it, oh God, to be who we are today. We don't deserve much. We don't qualify for it, oh God. But your grace has been sufficient, oh God. Your grace, oh God, has sustained us, oh God. When we without, oh God, will it come to morning? When we thought, Lord, Will I get the next meal, O oh God? Your hand has provided, O oh God, my master. And so, Lord, my master, help us, O oh God, to love you, O oh God, to love you like, like you love us, O oh God, my master. Father, Lord, not my master, help us to reflect, reflect on what you have done, O oh God, my master. Father, Lord, let's remember that you treasure us. We are your treasure and possession, Lord. Not that we deserve it, O oh God, my master, but Lord, because of your mercy, O oh God, you treasure us, O oh God. You take us so dearly, O oh God, my master. Help us, O oh God, to know that, O oh God, my master. And so, Lord, that we shall not compromise, O oh God, my master. 
Give us the grace, O God, to set ourselves apart, O God. Father, give us the grace, O God, my master, to be obedient to your word, O God, my master. King of kings, to remember that even when we are rejected by everyone else in the world, O God, my master, as long as we are obedient to you, O King of kings, my master, you love us dearly. You close, you, you hold us close to your eyes, O God, my master. King of kings, I am praying, oh God, that we will give this word, oh God, my master, to those, oh God, that need it, oh God, to those that are discouraged, oh God, to those, oh God, my master, that do not know what to do next, oh God, to those, my master, that have given up on their lives, oh God, my master. Father, use us as a vessel, oh God, to declare your praises, to declare what you have done for us, oh God. Father, Lord, my master, that we will not just say, you know, I am a mighty woman of God. I am a mighty man of God, O King of Kings. That we will remember, O God, my master, that, Lord, we did not give you anything, anything, O God, my master, for people to say, oh, I want to be like you. I want to be like you. I, I, I admire you, O oh God, I pray that, Lord, we will know, that we will understand, Lord, that it is not because of us, but it is by your grace, O oh God, my master. Father, Lord, my master, you, O oh God, my master, who has turned the lives around, I pray that we shall be used as vessels to turn those around us, O oh God, my master, to know your God. Through what we do, O oh God, my master, through our speech, O oh God, my master, O oh King of kings, that we'll be careful the way we move, O oh God, the way we go, O oh God, my master. Help us to understand that we have no strength on our own, O King of Kings, but that we have to depend on you, O King of Kings, my master. Oh, you are the Lord that sustained us, O God, that sustains us, O God. Father, that we not have to fear that the bigger and stronger um, men, O God, my master, the Anakites, O King of Kings. Oh, David said, O King of Kings, that though war break out against me, I will not fear, O God. One thing I ask of you is that I will dwell in your temple all the days of my life. Oh, King of Kings, that we shall dwell in your temple all the days of our life, oh God, my master, that Lord, my master, we shall be, oh God, my master, in your presence all the days of our lives, that we shall be dependent on you all the days of our lives, oh God, for in the day of trouble, oh God, you will hide us in your pavilion, oh King of Kings and Lord of Lords, my master. In Father, Lord, that we shall not be scared of the enemy, we shall not be scared of the mighty army, O oh God. Father, that we shall be, O oh God, like Elisha, who said, show them the one on our side, O oh King of Kings, the one on our side, the armies of the Most High God, the armies of the hosts above that are on our side, O oh King of Kings. Father, that even when the army seem to be vast, O oh God, that when we are even, uh, uh, we, 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 we even cannot speak for ourselves, that you will speak for us, O oh God, my master. Father, Lord, forgive us. Forgive us for those times, O oh God, that we have bargained, O oh God, with the devil, O oh God, where we have negotiated, O oh God, my master, with the worldly standards, O oh God, where, O oh God, my master, we have not been different, O oh God, from those of the world, O oh God, my master, where they have said, O oh God, my master, if Susan is born again, O oh God, then I am also born again, O oh King of Kings. Forgive us, O oh Master, O oh King of Kings and Lord of Lords, that we shall be different, that we shall be different, that we shall be set apart, O oh God, my Master. For that is what pleases you, O oh God, my Master. King of Kings, O oh God, I pray that, Lord, my Master, we are living in the world, O oh God, but we are not of the world, O oh God. We are living in the flesh, O oh God, but the flesh, O oh God, my Master, is not supposed to govern us, O oh God, my master, we are to, to govern it, O oh God. And Father, Lord, as you have said, O oh God, still in Deuteronomy, that, Lord, my master, we will teach our children the way they should go, 
Father, for when they are old, O oh God, my master, they will not depart from your ways, O oh God, my master. Father, Lord, my master, in the name of Jesus, I want to break, O oh God, my master, every altar, every stronghold, every word, O oh God, every, every declaration that speaks against your children, O oh God, I declare that they shall not prosper, O oh God. We declare them powerless, O oh God. Father, Lord, my master, I want to thank you, Lord, that, Lord, you will distinguish us, O oh God, my master. Oh, you will distinguish us, O oh God, my master, because we are your children, O oh God. And, Lord, that we will remind ourselves that we are not fighting against flesh and blood, O oh God, my master, but against, O oh God, my master, the cosmic powers of this world, O oh God. And Lord, the one on our side is greater than the one, oh God, that is in the world, oh God, my master. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord, for you have chosen us, oh God, in such a season like this, oh King of Kings, my master, to honor you, oh King of Kings. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. We glorify your holy name. Thank you for loving us. Thank you, oh God, my master, that you mind about us, oh God. And Father, Lord, I surrender this day into your hands. I surrender, oh God, this month into your hands. That, Lord, we will move as people that have been set apart for you, oh God, my master. And, Lord, Father, Lord, as we move, oh God, my master, as your dearly loved children, oh God, Lord, glory and honor will be back to you, King of kings and Lord of lords. We bless you. We honor you, for it is in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that I have prayed and believed. Amen.